This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Hello and welcome to episode 55 of Cooking with Grief, the fortnightly romp through the weird and wonderful worlds of art, science and history as discovered in random facts learned in the week. I'm Chris, your host this episode, and like Sisyphus, I'm rolling the boulder of acceptable content up the cruel and unforgiving mountain of the Apple Podcast charts. I'm joined, as ever, by my dependable co-host. He's quick with a joke, and I'll light up your smoke, but hopefully there's nowhere he'd rather be. It's Chris. Hello. Um, you yes, you're, you're right. There is nowhere I'd rather be than... Um... <laughs> Stuck at yeah, home. In, in, yeah, just at home. <laughs> I quite like it at home, actually. It's one of the few things about lockdown that, um, well, not one of the few things, but like, it's been weird, weirdly um, similar to my normal life. Yeah, in fact, so, same. Until the gym shot, did not notice a thing. Thought, God, work's getting busy. <laughs> Masks are popular. Yeah, well, otherwise. It's like, well, you've recently had a birthday and I've got a birthday coming up, and in both cases, our plans were. <laughs> depressingly unaffected by the fact that we couldn't see anybody. Yeah, if, if anything, improved. Like, <laughs> it was my go-to excuse of, like, are you doing anything? No, absolutely nothing, because, you know, pandemic, so guess I'll stare at the wall. This uh, is a bleak uh, insight into our lives than maybe I would have liked, so I will put some levity back in my voice and introduce our guest co-host this week. So, not as ever, we're joined by a guest co-host, the Antipodean Aristotle himself, stand-up comedian and host of the Weird News Quiz, it's Matt Harvey. Oh, hey there. Hey, hello. How are we? We're broadly fine, if... <laughs> a little bit sad? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Just just a bit empty on the inside, but apart from that, we're... Uh, I mean, well. getting the boulder halfway up the mountain feels good, <laughs> but when it rolls back down, then... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, maybe Very it's like, it, it, maybe it, it, it's less like Sisyphus and more like a dung beetle. Um, you know. What are you doing though? Is you got to look on the positive. Like you know, you've always got something to do when you're rolling a boulder up a hill. <laughs> There's always a task. Yeah, yeah it's good for people who like uh, busy work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're a like, fan of a, a very like consistent to-do lists, then Sisyphus, the Sisyphean philosophy. I don't know if it's a philosophy. But well, it's a like uh, punishment. Yeah, it's not philosophy; it's a way of life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sort of like Nike, just do it, just roll that boulder, <laughs> just effing do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. Like an ancient Greek Nike advert, and it's just like, just do it again <laughs> and again <laughs> and again. Sort of like Nike cost. <laughs> just do it. Open brackets and molest young boys. Close brackets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's as cancelled. <laughs> it's historically it accurate. Yeah, well, it's either that or yeah. transform yourself into an animal and convince a woman to mm-hmm. have a child with you. Either way. Right, great small talk. I was going to say, think <laughs> out of this one. <laughs> uh, carefully edited, I think. Um, so here's how the podcast works. Uh, ordinarily, Chris and I would proffer two tasty topics each. But with a guest co-host, we get to kick back and coast on the calm waters of one topic apiece. Meanwhile, our unfortunate guest has to put in twice as much work for literally nothing in return except a fruit basket. I am looking forward to that fruit, though. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. You can't send fruit to Australia, so I hope you like a note saying your plums have been forcibly seized. I look. I'll I'll uh, frame it. I'll put it on the wall. Like especially because if someone's taking my plums, then well, you know, like that feels like a uh, feels like a, an angry metaphor. I mean, I, it's just part of sort of modern airport life now. You know, you've got to take your shoes off and your belt, and you've got you've got to have your plums forcibly seized. <laughs> your plums ready for seizure. <laughs> no, no, my plums are seizing. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I was, no I was gonna say, like, I've never, I've never had anything. If I can derail us immediately by hmm. telling a short story, You're no <laughs> I've never had anything seized through customs. But I was taken into custody in America upon arrival. <laughs> Why? What did you do? Um, did it just look funny. It was traveling alone. Traveling alone is what got me, like. <laughs> Why don't you have this. friends? Yeah, basically, that was the that was the line of the questioning because they're like, "Why are you here?" 
uh, do you know anyone here? And I was like, no, I don't know anyone here. I'm just like visiting. And they're like, uh, like, are you working? I'm like, no, no. And they're like, hmm. And then I was like ushered into like a, a side room full of uh, people who were but technically nowhere. Like we weren't on American soil yet in any legal uh. sense. So we, we didn't exist anywhere. So we just take it into like a, a void of nothingness. <laughs> You're basically on the CIA black side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Or if you'd like to follow us down the existential corridor. <laughs> yeah. I actually have had something um, confiscated at customs. Well, I mean, I was just a kid. So it was my parents who had it. But um, my granddad was confiscated at customs. Your granddad? <laughs> Did you get it him was... back? Yeah, well, because he was... Um... A note saying your granddad has been seized. <laughs> yeah, well, at this point, it was, he was um, ashes at this point. And they're taking him to scatter him in Jamaica. Ah, of course. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he um, apparently they didn't have the right paperwork to prove that he was oh, dead, no. apart from the fact that he was clearly <laughs> not going to be sacked. Well, this pile of ashes could come back to life at any yeah. moment. Yeah. As far as we know, it's a voodoo curse. Have you got anything to say for yourself? No, he's ashes. Uh, don't speak for him, please. Yeah. yeah so I had to, um, had to come back and get him like, the next day. It's just like... Uh. Did you still go through with it? Like, Oh, but the... Uh, yeah, yeah. But I was going to say, the other thing that got confiscated, which my mum to this day is still like angry about was they confiscated her apple <laughs> like, to this day about 20 years later she, if you bring it up she's like and they confiscated my bloody apple <laughs> never got that apple back did i i like how it's on an equal pairing it's like uh, or, or equal apple in the but it's like we can't you can't bring through ashes or, or so you're going nowhere with that small piece of fruit yeah, yeah well a small bit of compensation for the man who had to sit with a bucket of ashes all day <laughs> yeah the ultimate indignity he sat there smugly eating your apple and snorting your granddad <laughs> yeah there's de- he's definitely got some of your granddad in a bag somewhere it's good so that's it's what happens when you employ next Keith to Richards all the ashes at, at the, yeah. uh, customs i swear granddad in a bag is an unsuccessful smith's b-side <laughs> It was either that or girlfriend in a coma. <laughs> either way, you're not getting much conversation. <laughs> no. Right, well. <laughs> that feels like a natural end point. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the, the timey gods have decreed. Uh, the, in- the, in- the intro must end. <laughs> oh, mighty Kronos, deliver us from this never ending intro. <laughs> Uh, and we'll kick things off with uh, Matt's first topic. Okay, so I thought, given my location, that I might do something a bit more uh, Australia-centric. I want to talk about the platypus, the underappreciated weirdo of animals. There was a, a news story recently about uh, the, the cracking of the genome of the Australian platypus. Or the Australian platypus, they're the only platypus. <laughs> the only platypus. <laughs> the unnecessary to... qualifier. <laughs> yeah, it's the like North the... American platypus. <laughs> I used to know a guy at university called American Jake, and he was literally the only Jake in the class. <laughs> but still, he was still called American Jake. <laughs> no, Jake was his surname. <laughs> his first name was American. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I know about the platypus is it's, it's the only mammal that can make its own custard. Um... <laughs> they are very skilled cooks. Um, oh, it's, it's all organic. You know, well, well, we'll get into some of, some of that. There's a I when so I read this uh, cracking of the genome story, and I, I learned some new things about the um, the characteristics of a platypus. But then I went down a bit of a, a rabbit hole to find out as much as I could about it. There is a stunning amount of information to learn about this animal. I mean, because most Australian animals have some odd characteristics. Um, you know, like wombats have square poots and, mm-hmm. and kangaroos, male kangaroos have two penises and females have three vaginas. That. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, the, the third vagina is, the weird thing is about. a... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the most well, normal have, thing. <laughs> the females have three vaginas and one of them's a fake. So <laughs> there's... Yeah. I, I could... Yeah. Um, all <laughs> koalas have chlamydia. But then there's the platypus, who blows them all out of the water. Sorry, just before we delve too deep into the platypus, a phrase which I'm instantly regretting. <laughs> how, yeah. does, how does a kangaroo fake a vagina? Well, so, so it's got two functional yep. vaginas. 
and a third one to because you know there's two penises i guess to just in case i think it's for like just in uh, case cuz you know uh, there's a lot of non-consensual uh, uh love making in in nature mm. and so i think it's one of those it's a deterrent just in case like to throw off I see, to but, counterbalance okay. the two penises so <laughs> one might go into the fake vagina i see but oh, so it's a physical thing they don't like fashion it out of clay <laughs> Yeah. No, no. Okay. Yeah, right. they've just okay. they've got like an extra. Okay, so it's not a sort of like slot. a kangaroo flashlight sort of thing. <laughs> no, no. Right. No. Okay. Sorry so, to. Sorry to. Uh, I'm, no, not at all. Sorry to derail these it are important slightly questions. <laughs> but isn't it great? Uh, I mean, not to insult our own podcast again, but isn't it great that like, with the guest where you ask the question and like you've got the answer, whereas <laughs> normally when me and Chris <laughs> ask each other a follow up question, we just sort of shrug and go, "No idea." <laughs> was it in the Wikipedia article that was reading? So. <laughs> It wasn't in the headline. Stop yeah. asking me. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the the thing about, I guess, an additional thing about the two vaginas, there's two wombs. And so um, they'll have a baby. And if something happens to that baby, like maybe it dies prematurely, the gestation in the second womb will kick in and they'll birth an, another baby slightly down the line. Oh, so it's sort of like a species clever. preservation thing. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, but the platypus smashes all of them in terms of weirdness. Historically, you probably know this already, when they were uh, reported back by George Shaw, uh, it was believed that it wasn't a real creature because it was so bizarre looking. They thought that they had sewed together two creatures, uh, yeah. much like the Fijian mermaid. And so they, say, like, they were looking I... for stitches. <laughs> Yeah, I'd fully be except you know, like a lot of the time you look at like old timey um zoology things and you're like, you're just mm. making shit up, you know, when they're like Yeah. Oh yeah, they um they just grow in the ground. Like moles grow in the ground, like they're made of mud or whatever, like you're like, Oh that's bullshit. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I'm fully on board with whichever like Victorian or whatever year it was, like scientist who's just like, You made that up. <laughs> like yeah, it's got yeah. a duck like, it's it's like a it's beaver a with a duck's face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and poisonous barbs. <laughs> Well, it's, it's like the first time mm-hmm. they sent a, a walrus back to be taxidermied and they failed to mention that it should have folds of sort of very flappy skin. So they just kept yeah. stopping it until it was this round spherical <laughs> lump of blubber. And they went, is that it? They went, yeah, yeah, close enough. The great walrus balloon. <laughs> <laughs> they use a bunch of them to lift their house in up. It's <laughs> um, All right, so these guys, uh, they, they've released a study in the scientific journal Nature. And it's the first complete mapping of the genome of the platypus. And they found out that the platypus, uh, the species is so old, like it diverged from other mammalia so long ago that it's actually part bird, part reptile, and part mammal. <laughs> Again, it just yes. sounds made up. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so they're essentially, they're, they're nature's hybrid. You know what I mean? Like hmm. they're just running on gas yeah. and electricity. Um, <laughs> So scientists are pretty excited lay, about this. I was going to say, no, they lay eggs, eggs, don't they? They do lay eggs, yeah. Okay, yeah. I can't remember if that was something made up or was real. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many odd characteristics that I guarantee you I could make a bunch of stuff up and you'd probably be like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Why wouldn't they do that? Yeah, with a six-foot wingspan, I absolutely believe they can fly. <laughs> well, that's only the queen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. And all, all of those sort of crawl towards wherever the queen is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so they, they go back so back so far back into uh, it's about fifty seven million years ago when the species diverged, what they call the um, Eocene epoch, which is sort of the beginning of the the modern age of animals when the mm. the continents were sort of drifting apart. They there are species called monotreme, which uh, given you guys know like your, your ancients a little bit you mm-hmm. might recognize is means single hole because oh. they have a cloaca yeah, so their species is named that. after the fact that they have a cloaca you know a cloaca yeah cloaca? it's, a, yeah, it's like all like like you shoot <laughs> yeah, that's right it's a it's shoehorn it's used to <laughs> uh, no it's a there's yeah. single hole birds have them famously birds yeah, i was gonna say birds have them don't they yes yeah, some reptiles have them and the, so it's the single hole used for both for sex and for defecation but it's all all in that one space uh, so them one. and echidnas yeah them and echidnas are the only living species that come from the monotreme family and i've got a big list of 
some of which we've hit on already. But mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll go through this list of, of features and um, you guys can be uh, surprised or guffaw or tell me that I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, they've got 10 sex chromosomes, which is quite a, a large variation <laughs> compared to most, because, you know, most mammals only have two, sometimes mm -hmm. three or four if you get that rare variant. Um, but they have five pairs of X chromosomes, five Y chromosomes, so it's like X and Ys, but in a slightly different combinations. I know this uh, is a follow-up question that you don't know the answer to, but does that mean that there's more variants than like male and female then, or are they still? I tried to look that up. I because that's what my assumption was. Because mm. um, we do have uh, XXY in humans as well, and mm. what that usually means is that it's harder for them to uh, to have babies okay. if you've got the XXY variant. So I think it just might, and I'm, I'm not a, a biologist, so uh, feel free to at me and tell me that I'm wrong. But <laughs> I think it might just be like varying levels of like potency or ability to breed, or maybe it carries different um, qualities across. I, To be honest, you're right. I don't actually know, but I did try to look and I, because I thought maybe that would be the case, but I guess yeah. if that is, they, um, they haven't really uh, put that information out there yet, or they haven't discovered that yet. That might be something that we learn in a couple of years as this goes on. So if the police I mean, were to do a, a pride parade, it'd be pretty, like quite a lot of different flags. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The United Shades of Platypus. Um, I've, I've picked them partly because they're, they're starting to become endangered at the moment. So I figure oh. the more we talk about them, they, they're like teetering on vulnerable. So I figure the more we talk about them, the more people will take interest in them. Maybe we can save a few. We can do a good thing say. with nonsense. Let's, yeah. Of all the cruelties of the last couple of years, like at least like don't take the platypus from us. Yeah, right. Uh, we need a couple of good ones. So we've mentioned that they have venomous spurs, and that's only on the males. Uh, that carries back a, a fair way into evolution. Um, they've got a coat that under fluorescent light glows. I think it's like a greeny blue. So. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what? Are there a lot of fluorescent lights in nature? <laughs> I think it's like bioluminescence is hmm. sort of the answer. Because there's a couple of creatures that apparently glow under, well, not a lot, but there's a few that glow. Oh, uh, but it's like a, a bioluminescent. So yeah. I just got remember, uh, I just remembered something where they were trying to, scientists were trying to, like, they were. They were doing some experiment. I think they're trying to like cure feline AIDS or something like that, like or come up with something. And they're doing some gene splicing mm. thing. But the way they figured a way of telling the easiest way to tell if the gene splicing had worked was they also put in the gene that makes jellyfish glow into the uh, DNA yeah, sequence. Yeah. So then right. they could in yeah they could inject whatever. I, again, I'm giving a very sort of layman's. <laughs> explanation yeah. For like oh yeah you just inject a bit of the old jellyfish dna um, just get it scrape yeah. it up chuck yeah. it in bring it yeah, up jellyfish and then, yeah. scoop it up yeah. yeah yeah and then the cats would glow in the dark if it, if it had worked you'd have a glow in the dark cat and you'd be like oh yeah that one's oh, yeah. that one's been cured of that one's safe whatever yeah so they sort of like um, they they're... make glow in the dark cats as a side effect <laughs> well there's a, a company i think it still exists in south korea that clones pets so you can pay oh. it's like ten thousand dollars to clone your pet and bring it back to life and That's um bad. one of the ways that they know that the pet is a clone is so they had these dogs whose claws glow in the dark because they've modified them so that they know who the clone is oh that it's is fascinating so, right that is amazing it's such like a yes yeah. it's so amazing it's, so it's amazing. such like a silly purpose yeah yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's so the clone can't kill the original and claim to be <laughs> yeah, the original. Takes, yeah, takes, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a Schwarzenegger film with that exact plot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he plays one of the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a, like a bulldog. He's a big, big tough bulldog. <laughs> so they've got their, on their, um, their feet, you know, like cats will have retractable claws. Mm -hmm. But they've got, so they do have little little claws, but instead of retracting the claws, what they do is they retract the webbing between the claws so that when they're in the water, they can put the webbing out. But when they're on land, they oh. can retract the webbing so they can walk a bit easier. 
clever. There's another it like is. amphibious. What do you call yeah, it? they're like it's a like those cars. vehicle. Yeah, or like a, the James Bond car that goes yeah. underwater. Everything <laughs> 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 Yeah, the, the the webbing comes out. And it starts to swim. It glows in the dark. It's actually the platypus mobile. Uh, they, so as we mentioned, they lay eggs instead of giving mm. birth to live babies, but they do feed their babies with milk. The thing is, the major difference with their milk is it's not delivered by nipples. Uh, platypus don't have nipples. Instead, what happens is the mother platypus sweats milk, <laughs> and, the, and the the babies lick it off her fur. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know you said like, you could make anything up, and we'd be like, yeah, yeah. You're like, sure. Got too, too silly. You played your hand too early. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying milk sweat. Milk sweat. <laughs> Which is, um, I believe, uh, an album from Nelly. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, so they're born with teeth, but as they mature, the teeth fall out and they never grow back. So, you know, they're born with baby teeth, but they um, they, they use like gravel and, and they've got a couple of little like, I don't know what they're called. But they might be little incisors, but they've got something in there to help with chewing. But uh, mostly they use gravel to chew it up. But... They also don't have stomachs. They have a, a gullet like fish, and that um, connects directly to the intestine. <laughs> it's just at this point, it's like, right, like, who who made this up? <laughs> you know, you just like, this right, is, we got like, like, right. like, there's so many like, you know, like you're saying about like the uh, bioluminescent yeah. fur. There are clear like evolutionary divergences that make sense, but it's like. Mm -hmm. There's too much weird. Why be born with teeth? That's so much extra work, only to grind yeah, them down yeah, and not just, even have a stomach. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, and on a on a uh, evolutionary level, you would think that they would have gotten rid of that by now, just because they, they don't use them really. But I guess it helps the babies to to chew, maybe. Like yeah. maybe it helps them in an early age, like develop jaw muscles or something. Learn. But you would have thought just be fine. Well, it's, I guess it's like um koalas. Koalas are born without the enzyme to digest eucalyptus they have to eat their mother's poo to get the enzyme like how has that not been sorted out by evolution yet yeah. that's a that's a long-term thing like it's their major food that's source true. yeah i was gonna say yeah. isn't aren't they the ones that literally only eat eucalyptus mm -hmm. yeah and but they, they're not born with the ability to uh, eat it i've read somewhere that koalas are so stupid or maybe stupid is a harsh term but um their brains like so if you're feeding the, you know, like in like the reserves or whatever, like mm. zoo, wherever they are, nature reserve things where like they're sort of looked after by people, you have mm. to feed them eucalyptus. Like the leaves have to still be on the stick because if you just give them right. a plate of eucalyptus leaves, they like they literally just don't even recognize it as food. So they have to keep That's it on the stick because then they, they, they only it only triggers their like the brain when they see it on the stick still. I like you say plate. Like, <laughs> just say you invite them to a dinner party. Yeah, just give them a stick. <laughs> Sticky tape all their food to the stick, yeah. or else they won't know what you're feeding them. Here's some biscuits. It's on a stick. <laughs> I mean, donuts would be the easiest snack, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I've got five five more platypus snacks for you. I don't. I'm going to stop you now. Yeah, I don't I believe, don't any, believe of any of those. Any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Too silly. So platypus's bill has thousands of cells. And it sort of acts like a sixth sense. They, they're sort of like um, electromagnetic, oh, not electromagnetic, but they can sense the like electric fields generated by other living things. Oh, and, sharks um, can do that. So mm, that's how so they they're, hunt, they're now part shark. Yeah. Apparently it's so sensitive that they can hunt with their eyes, ears, and nose all closed and just rely on their, their bill Wait, what, while they're underwater. What do they eat? Are they carnivorous or... What, what they are up? carnivorous. Oh, bloody hell. Um, I just assume because they look so cute creatures. and cuddly, although um, I suppose the venomous spurs might have been a giveaway. They eat I... small, small water animals like insect oh. larvae, freshwater shrimp, and crayfish. Okay. Carnivorous, but not too scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're not going to eat a person. A yeah, no, I was going to say, there's no money to platypus. <laughs> Um, so the their tail is actually, I think in females, this is only true, it stores up to nearly half of their body fat in case of a food shortage, you know, like camels. Uh, oh, no, actually, that's for the males. And the females also use their tail to hold incubating eggs 
against their body warm. Uh, That's Australian the least weird recently... fact so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for a minute there, I thought you were claiming they store the eggs in the tail, and I was about to just uh, <laughs> force. Yeah, like the queen from play. Aliens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like pop it out every so often. Um, so the Australian scientists have discovered two distinctly unique things about them. So they've discovered that the their venom contains a hormone which could aid in diabetes treatment. Sure, why not? Because uh, it promotes insulin release. It lowers blood glucose levels, basically. I don't know if that's good or bad for their like endangered um, status. Well, I would like <laughs> to think that it is good because it would encourage <laughs> protection and breeding because mm. once we find a use for something, we just overbreed it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's why cows are here. Yeah. Like they, They're not a native of Australia, but they're everywhere. And uh, I mean, camels too, but... We've got, we've got, uh, fun fact, we've got the largest population of camels in the world. I was going to say, didn't, I'm sure we covered it once, where I, yeah, I was I'm sure Chris brought it up, that they all, they ship all the camels, from, not all the camels, obviously, but like, yeah, like a large number them, shipped yeah. from Australia to like the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they were brought over to like help desert exploration, and I guess that's <laughs> a flourishing environment for them. We've got lots of empty space, so plenty of space yeah. for camels. My One of my long-term uh, bugbears has been to... That we should like shift from beef production to camel and uh, use that as like a sustainable source of meat but people don't like the idea of eating camel it's delicious but people don't like it I they they, they get really like yeah it's tasty if it was nice. and you nice yeah that's like it's yeah, yeah that's right big huge hump big fatty steak up there <laughs> yeah a bit watery but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the scientists also discovered that the platypus milk contains unique antibacterial properties, which could be used to fight antibiotic resistant bacteria. So the platypus could actually be the savior of mankind. You said that was in the milk? Yeah, it's in the milk. So, so this been... is the thing. So with the cows, right, you can obviously, you can milk a cow by grabbing the udders. And mm-hmm. I say, again, I'm saying this is somebody who's never <laughs> been face to face with a cow. I, I make it sound how very one, easy. How does yeah, one how would you make a platypus? Yeah, no, you just yeah. have to turn the temperature well, they, up and sweat it yeah, out. Because like. they sweat it, you've got to get them like, doing um, Mr. Motivator, <laughs> you know, like, running around. I know, I know if we breed them, then we're more likely to survive as a species. But then if like the farms are all cramped in like saunas to like, sweat them out, all these dehydrated <laughs> platter pies. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. Peter would be on that in a moment. Like, it, would, <laughs> it would not go well. No. But I don't, yeah, otherwise I don't know how you you milk a because there's no nipple, so I don't know how yeah. you milk a, a platypus oh, unless it's a. Well, we've got the episode title. Really oh, warm <laughs> yeah. Let me just write that down. <laughs> and the last fact I've got for you is that um, they've got they do have two standard ovaries, but only the left one is functional. What's the point of the right one? <laughs> it must be vestigial, like yeah. in the same way that whales have tiny little legs from when they used to live on the land. See, this is what's weird, right? So the platypus, and just going mm. back to how, I know we keep come circling back around to just, this is a weird animal. It but is like, a weird animal. Like, just looking at it, which should be weird enough. Like, oh yeah, that's a weird looking animal. It's got like a duck beak, but then it looks like a mammal. Like, oh, that's weird. And then it's like, oh, and they lay eggs. It's like, oh, and that's another weird thing. And it's like, also they glow in the dark. <laughs> You're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, it, this this becomes like a circuitous logic thing. But so um, there's, you know, people obviously advocate for intelligent design, which <laughs> the uh, platypus seems to be a clear indication of otherwise. The platypus mm-hmm. is the living embodiment of random chaos. It or, is or, just... or, or over design. You know, it's just like... Yeah. It's, you know, too many cooks for all the... Pl- all this functionality in this sleek little design. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just it's Bluetooth enabled. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just love the idea of the platypus yeah. being, like, the symbol of chaos. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's the joker I, I of the animal it. kingdom. <laughs> yeah, just a very casually nocturnal sleepy <laughs> joker. It's just it yeah. doesn't get up to too much. <laughs> the laid-back version of the joker. Well, we've got bats. We've got fruit bats and everything here. So, you know, they've got the, the mm. working dynamic. It's got a natural <laughs> enemy. Uh, but that's my my fact for you guys. They've uh, sequenced the genome of the platypus and uh, they've discovered a lot of weird things in the uh, in the interim. Well, thank you very much. I don't believe half of what you've said. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like a Wes Wally of true facts. 
the truth is that a dog wants a tax one. That, that's it. Everything else. <laughs> so in that case, we shall move on to Chris. We'll have your topic next. Okay. Well, for my first fact, um, and we'll be going fact. some and only fact <laughs> actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're visiting our old stomping grounds of ancient Greece, which we've also managed to stomp around in the uh, in the intro. <laughs> so, you know, on brand, I guess. Yeah, we know our place. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so actually, this question for well for both of you, but um, Matt, obviously, I know you've done um, well. You are a stand-up comic, and Chris, I know you've done a bit. What's the worst mistake you've ever made on stage? I mean, just going on stage in the first place was <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, my life slowly died over the course of an eight-minute set. <laughs> oh, eight minutes? That's, that's a rough that's, first set. Yeah. Yep. That's the thing. I, I know my place. I, I, I've seen the bright lights of the stage and I thought, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to stay stay away from all that. Yeah, what's the opposite of a moth? You're a showbiz anti-moth. <laughs> <Andy Moth. laughs> the mole. Yeah. Yeah. It's why it's um, like why we do a podcast. I get to hide behind anonymity. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can see my face. If anything that goes wrong, we just cut it out. It's a lot safer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I um so I did a, a theatre show uh, a few years back, and uh, one of the egregious physical gags was me sitting in my underpants on stage, uh, spread eagle to the crowd. <laughs> and um, I did not double check the underwear that I was wearing for this particular oh. show. Yeah, and I had a a, a ball slip out. And out. Um, <laughs> wow! It it took a while for anyone in the crowd to notice, or for them to be brave enough to basically. And here's the rub, right? So I don't we know had the phrase. You should use. <laughs> <laughs> it is the exact phrase we should use. Oh right, okay. So we had a, the show was like um, split into sections, and uh, part of it was directed as by were three your of testicles, us. To be yes, fair. that's also <laughs> testicles. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so the there was three directors, uh, including myself. Uh, obviously, I didn't direct this scene, um, but I was the first person to laugh in the audience was one of the directors and that like blo- broke the floodgates for everyone else to feel like it was okay to, <laughs> to respond. I did my best to remain professional and I sat like that for a little bit before finding a natural point in the script to adjust my seatage. And <laughs> was it a, just, um, just out of interest, then, what was the tone of the play? Was it a comedy? It was or... a comedy. So oh, that worked lucky. well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very lucky. It wasn't like doubt the play, uh, <laughs> but it was it was an older play. I can't. Remember. It's called the Philanthropist. If anyone's uh, curious about what the play is, it's a good play. It's fun. But yeah. So that happened, and then some dude after the play, and I don't to this day I don't know if he means literally or figuratively, but he's like, "You've got big balls." <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, I, really I don't know if he do. means like. I hope it's it was, he thinks it's big, <laughs> and, or if he's like, that was a bold move. I wouldn't have done that on stage. I like so, to think he's just I'll... very literally just goes up to people. Whenever he just notices <laughs> somebody, he's like, you know what? You got big balls. <laughs> and then that's it. And then he's he goes off with his day. Women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. So I was expecting wow. something. Was honestly, I was expecting something uh, milder than that because I was going to wow. say, oh, well, at least your <laughs> mistake happened. <Like, laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, you it? tell us what yeah. the mistake is. Yeah. Uh, so, um, no, I was going to say, this one actor on stage managed to ruin his career with one line, well, with one word, and yet also be remembered two and a half thousand years later, again, for his one mistake. So he's a guy by the name of, I mean, I've got to talk, it's all about mispronunciation here, and yet I can't actually say his name, Hegelocus, I believe. Um, well, again, I apologise because I Well, I mean, he's not going to come and yeah, you or anything. Exactly. The Hegelopus so he was... Twitter is not coming for you. <laughs> so he was an actor in ancient Greece back in, uh, well, this his one um, moment in history was 408 BC. Um, good time. And, yeah, good time to have by all, apart from Hegelopus. <laughs> um, so he was in Euripides' play Orestes, and 
he had the line to say, after the storm, I see again a calm sea. Only when he said it, he accidentally said, after the storm, I see again a weasel. And, the, <laughs> <laughs> and that's apparently because he was supposed to say, uh, again, my pronunciation is not going to help here, but it's Galen Horo, or Galen Horo, and he said Galen Horo. Again, I might be pronouncing both of those wrong, but the general idea was the word, he put the emphasis on E, he had the wrong tone on the E right. of Galen, which changed the word from a calm sea to a weasel. And <laughs> I found not only was, you know, it's like, it'd be bad enough if, you know, like, could you think with a play and in the, you know, obviously mm. well before <laughs> no one was videoing it and anything like that, you'd think, you know, like, you probably thought you got away with it. Like, all right, I slipped up, but you know what? <laughs> Go again tomorrow night, it'll be fine. Like, it's all be forgotten. Yeah, and instead... The reviewers he... weren't in that night, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, well, instead he was mocked mercilessly. He was included a playwright called Sanyerion, who was another Athenian comic poet. He um, he mocked him mercilessly about it. He was then ridiculed in an Aristophanes play called The Frogs. He was he was also included in uh, two plays by Stratus, mocking in his pronunciation. Another Aristophanes play. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, just getting in. Yeah. And he's really cool. laying into it. His career from this point on was ruined and he never acted again. So his one, oh, one line. Oh, one punch. He punched one line and was mocked in at least five of the plays. And then um yeah. He's still known, like almost two and a half thousand years later, for the time he fucked up one line. Wow. And it's literally the difference right. between Galen and Galen. Yeah, like, that's it. That's strong grammar Nazi <laughs> behavior right there. Yes. I mean, like, you know, people talk about cancel culture today, but I mean, they usually get a bit more <laughs> leeway than that, don't you? They don't write five plays about you <laughs> yeah. mispronouncing one word or one letter of one word. W one letter or one word, and that's it. That's you just say weasels instead of C. It's not even a word, it's literally just a... Uh... An inflection over the vowel, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, if I yeah exactly. Yeah, Greek, yeah. Schoolboy Greek. Well, as as this Wikipedia page <laughs> seems to agree with you. Oh, excellent. Um, yeah. It, well, in fact, I can tell you, and um, maybe this will make sense to you as somebody who's actually studied Greek, because I have no idea what any of this means. He should have used a rising tone, but he accidentally used a rising falling tone. Ah, classic. <laughs> well, I mean, uh... I don't know what that that means, but yeah, what, yeah, I'm sure. what does a rising it was apparently a big deal in ancient, mean, ancient Greece. What do they call? Uh... Oh, what's it called? Acapo, uh, acapo, apacope or something? Acapella. I was gonna say acapoco. <laughs> <laughs> Going local down in acapoco. <laughs> yes, that is what I meant. Yeah, uh, all I can tell you is the E on the letter had different hats. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so. Thank you, Professor. Yes, yeah. in, in the, yeah. He's the professor that, of hatology. Yeah. Oh no, you're right. It does say apocopo, apocope. My most expensive private education was not in vain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all come to this moment. <laughs> and you can't even say weasel in ancient Greece. <laughs> Greek. You see, this is your moment to mispronounce something. So there's going to be like. Yeah. Five other podcasts mocking you for mispronouncing yeah. it. So, like, well, say boo to a goose, say weasel to a Greek. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> is, is this like, um, you know, because obviously, like, how many other fifth century BC actors do you know? Not many. So, in yeah. one sense, he's achieved a level of fame and, you know, like, um, mm. infamy. Infamy, yeah, and sort of in immortality. Made, made him but, quit acting altogether. <laughs> yeah, just on the other hand, he probably died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just mocked any time he walks around the streets of Athens, just being like people yelling "weasel" at him or something. <laughs> he, yeah, he just couldn't go to the beach anymore because people would be like, "Are you diving in the the weasels today?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably every day he, he ever went on, you know, like looking over like a moonlit vista and like, ah, oh, looks. Just love the way that the moonlight shines off the weasel. It's like, all right, okay. I do have another story actually about you know people ruining actors' careers. Um, in Milan, there's the uh, there's a famous opera house called the the Scala, and uh, there the crowd is apparently like really quite 
and this is like in modern times i mean like they get really into it like like up in the gallery like they're known for um, passion, quote unquote, and um, oh, apparently they really do appreciate like a really good performance. But apparently, once there was a guy who the uh, crowd does that, and this again, I'm talking like modern times here. There's a guy who basically he wasn't doing; he was a bit off key on the night, or whatever, and he got booed and heckled so mercilessly he had to quit there and there on the stage, and he's understood he had to take over. <laughs> And that wow. was again the end of his career. Funny, you've got one testicle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if only I would have distracted everyone enough to to keep going. I mean, I've been heckled before, but not like that. That's intense. I know. Like, yeah, here we go. Ah, it was only in two thousand and six. Never perform again. <laughs> oh, brutal. <laughs> the, the joke's been made, but and they say cancer culture is bad now. What was the play? Ada. The uh, I think I know opera Ada. by. Uh, so that's the Ada. So oh, here we go. Booze from La Scala's notoriously okay. unshy uh, Lodgenisti, the upper balcony aficionado crowd, greeted the tenor um, with booze. And he uh, stormed off stage and his standing was thrust on stage to finish the act whilst just in his, well, it says whilst in jeans. I assume he also had the top on. I think he's commenting on the fact he wasn't in costume <laughs> rather than being naked from the waist up. No, but... Just in jeans. <laughs> yeah. He was backstage just preparing to go home. He was <laughs> undressing. He's like, these guys have got this. I'll just uh, slowly change and put my own clothes back on. And he was caught mid mid change and thrust on stage, jeans only, to sing. I actually went, went there. Um, I can't. Because I, I don't know it's a holiday. And I could tell opera's just, it was one of those things I'd never been to opera before. And it was like one of the things where I was like, oh yeah, I can appreciate the culture of this. And then like, you know, and it got to like, Two hours, and I was like, okay, yeah, ready to go home. And it's like the curtains came off, and like, right, intermission. Back. And I was like, it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, ready to go home. And it's like, another two hours. Like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, yeah, it's good. I appreciate the art form. And it's like, four hours later, it's like, I, I no longer appreciate the art form. <laughs> I just, just want to go home. My, um, my parents told me, uh, I think one of the few times they've been to like a big musical theatre production, they went to see Phantom of the Opera. And uh, they did not realize it had an intermission <laughs> and left uh, at, the, at the intermission point, thinking, well, that was a weird ending. <laughs> God, that was a very didn't resolve anything. Conclusion. Yeah, like really bad, like poorly written. Why is this play so popular? Uh, but yeah, they never, they never got back. They never went to see it. Uh, did they ever look up the ending? To no, this day. To this day. day. <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite a good question, though. What? piece of artwork is most changed by finishing it halfway through probably yeah. a painting <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah no that's yeah. That, that that is fair you know keith oh, harry does say, it intentionally but i was gonna say if you work you know if you leave fights uh, like fight club halfway through you know it's just like um you just get two men bombing at that point yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's well, a, like, oh, like, Titanic. Uh, if you look Titanic halfway yeah, through, Titanic. it's just a cruise. Yeah, you're like, this is a very boring love story. Nothing is <laughs> happening. There's a couple of people on a boat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Inception, uh, Memento. <laughs> Twist is in like the last two minutes of Memento. So. Yeah, that's true. Chicken Run just becomes a tale of incarceration with no freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Shawshank Redemption is just Shawshank. <laughs> it's just, it's just, Shawshank, just a depressing yeah. tale of a wrongly imprisoned man. But then only watching Shawshank halfway through is the tale of 2020 and 2021. Just <laughs> locked down for no reason. <laughs> Things watching that the same you can't films control. on TV all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, watching Shawshank all the yeah. time. Which is, <laughs> cause it's, a, it's just always on. So thank you, Chris. That's your topic. And we'll hand back over to Matt for uh, your second one. Either of you... I. I I just get the, the sense that neither of you are big hunters, yeah? I can't say I am. Well, it's that weird thing in Britain where we don't no. really have any dangerous wildlife, so the only things people hunt yeah. are, you know, the dreaded grouse. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, you killed a flightless bird. <laughs> Take it away, they want advantage. <laughs> yeah. It's like hunting a kiwi bird or a penguin. <laughs> uh, but on horseback. <laughs> Uh, obviously, America is a, a country that is full of gun enthusiasts, and along with that culture is obviously a lot of hunters. So mm -hmm. this is this was a couple of weeks ago in January. The Oklahoma Representative Justin 
Humphrey introduced a bill to the state legislature in an attempt to open up licenses for Bigfoot hunting season. Oh. Uh, um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, go for it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, as far as scams go, I guess it's an original one. Like, oh yeah, give us it's, a few yeah, quid, you can go hunt yourself a Bigfoot. <laughs> But, but Absolutely, it's, but it's not a scam though. They're they're upfront about it. It's like the same. <laughs> I mean, as, apart from the existence of Bigfoot, yeah, what, it's, it's totally. It's, like, yeah, but what I mean is, it's like it's not like uh, they're proclaiming like with this license you will definitely catch Bigfoot. Or, mm, and, and that's Bigfoot. true. It's like uh, the pursuit of happiness. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> it's not guaranteed that you'll be happy, but you're welcome to pursue it. Yeah, the real book Bigfoot was the friendship we made along the way. <laughs> along the way, <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of quite upfront about it his official statement does say a lot of people don't believe in bigfoot but a lot of people do <laughs> that's that like <laughs> like that bullshit yeah. like on both sides <laughs> things yeah absolutely it's, it's, it close <laughs> it's like on like, the one hand we have like 999 like learned scholars who have like detailed evidence about one thing and on the other hand we have keith <laughs> who's watching a youtube video and disagrees <laughs> We've got... a bag of proof yeah. that he can't identify. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. let's um, get so both of them and give them both equal air time to like, air their yeah. views. <laughs> I mean, ostensibly what it comes down to is the whole idea is, uh, in the words of the great Mel Brooks, it's all about merchandising, merchandising. <laughs> he explains that the licenses would be regulated by the Oklahoma Wildlife Conservation Commission, and it's all about driving tourism to towards the state so it is it's Arm very tourists. pt barnum it's yeah 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 we want more people who don't know their way around <laughs> searching for large human shaped animals <laughs> in the woods together <laughs> well it's that thing right so like obviously as brits we like let like mentioned before we don't really have any like big wildlife or anything mm. like we don't have bears we don't have lions anything like that and we're so used to like just you being used able to have to... lions. Yo, yeah, we killed everything. <laughs> like, killed our them ancestors all. killed everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, we're so used to just being able to go to the park or the woods or whatever, mm-hmm. and you can just walk, and there's absolutely nothing to fear or worry about or anything. Mm. And like, I remember going on holiday to America, and you know, we're just like, oh, let's go walking in the woods. And then people are like, why aren't you wearing orange? We're like, why well, we don't own any orange clothes? Like, why would we own any orange clothes? It's like, oh, because it's hunting season, so you know, you need to like. Make sure you wear an orange, or like you might get shot by a hunter. It's like, what the mm. fuck? Like, I just want to go for a walk in the woods without being like, like without being. No, no. And then the, season, you'll get shot. Yeah. And then at the other hand, as well, like you know, like the signs up being like, you know, bears in this area. Like, <laughs> here's what to do. It's like, I just want, I just want to go for a relaxing walk and like around some trees. Like, I'm not here to worry about where we get, you know, getting shot or mauled. <laughs> like, <laughs> didn't you tell, tell me? I think it was your. Your parents went on a holiday, they went for a walk, and there were signs oh, saying, oh, yeah. l- like, beware leopards about. Yeah, no, it was oh, uh, in California. No, it wasn't leopards, it was um, mountain lions, they were in California. Oh, yeah. But the oh, thing yeah. is, before they saw the sign, right. they'd seen some massive paw print in the grounds, and they were like, mm. wow, somebody must have an absolutely massive dog around here. <laughs> <laughs> They're in media force with somebody's pet. <laughs> somebody's got some like, that is... massive Alsatian or something like some <laughs> old Rottweiler. And then, then later on, they saw a sign that said like "Warning: Mountain lions in this area." And like, oh sh- shit! <laughs> like, and also the, the sign so worrying. informed them that they like hide up in the trees or like yeah. make sure you look up. And the sign was on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing you'll do is look up. <laughs> there he is. Well, again, it's just because it's that thing, like, you know, they've spent their entire lives in England, whatever, where, like, the most da- dangerous thing that can happen to you whilst walking is, like, being mobbed by squirrels or something. Like. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we've got a lot of dangerous animals here, but most of them are small, which <laughs> is not super reassuring, but... <laughs> I was going to say, they sneak their way in. Yeah, yeah uh, but at the same time... hiding under the, like, in the, the car door handle, that's... Yeah, That's worse. Yeah. Like, you can't hide a bear in a car door handle. <laughs> no, he's inside the car, waiting for you. <laughs> like on the back seat, like Michael Myers. Yeah. <laughs> like, <just sits up. laughs> it's a campfire story. But bear was in the back of the car. Um, no, but, yeah, 
I mean, obviously we've got crocodiles, but that's mostly up north. Uh, so like mm-hmm. northern Queensland, northern territory, the top end of um, Western Australia, and I'm sure that the there's a it's a lot of area that I've not been to, so I'm sure that it's very um, signposted and that. What have you got you in your least... neck of the woods? Um, well, see, there's rumours between uh, <laughs> there's rumours between New South Wales and regional Victoria of a black panther. Oh. That that's like a persistent rumor that oh we had that one in England there. and then it turned out it was literally just a normal cat. <laughs> they, shut, <laughs> they shut that everything shut down. That. I'm sure it was in like Essex or somewhere, and they were like calling the zoos to see if any had lost mm. like a big cat, and yeah, like the police were there and they were telling everyone to stay in the homes, and then they found out it was just a normal size cat. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really small man that reported it. He yeah. was. Six centimeters. <laughs> he had a, a massive BMI. BMI. <laughs> Cruelly denied a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> they just fed him to the uh, to the cat. Uh, but no, the, so that's that's been a, a rumor since like my entire life. That it pops up every five ten years. Someone will be like, "I saw the thing. I saw the panther." Even though I don't think panthers live that long, um, <laughs> but it's one of those things. But the I think the snakes. Snakes are probably the most dangerous animal around Victoria. Um, and like, if you're sort of more up north, it's um, blue bottles, the, the jellyfish, oh, the poisonous ones. You said blue bottles. I thought mm. you meant like flies. <laughs> I think they're called blue bottles. <laughs> so how they're not deadly. <laughs> we have those. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, our things are all venomous rather mm. than um, gigantic. We, we uh-huh. last of the megafauna here is like. You get a, a red koala who's six foot and very muscular, <laughs> and it'll kick you to death. <laughs> it's bad enough. Yeah. As I say, my you make it sound, um, like, but... sound like it's one particular koala. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's one guy. His name's Barry. <laughs> one guy just got a pong show for kicking the shit out of humans. We all know him. Yeah. Oh, fuck, here he comes. Clover Cornetto. Yeah, just take it. He away. wanders around like. Um... <laughs> yeah, he wanders around like uh, the guy in Kung Fu. From town to town, <laughs> to to town, people, town. <laughs> I was gonna say my least favorite animal is um, pla- you know, just talking about like how you know the ones that are small versus ones that can eat you or whatever. It's like giant snakes, like pythons and anacondas, because they're the mm. only creature that, if you're to do a Venn diagram of like animals that can sneak in through your toilet and animals that can, eat <laughs> <your> toilet, like <laughs> the only thing in the middle is like pythons and anacondas. There is a W on <laughs> okay, yeah. by the way. <laughs> you I mean, <laughs> if, if your toilet is big enough to accommodate an anaconda, <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> Maybe get smaller pipes. <laughs> They're big creatures. <laughs> It's still it's a persistent fear. I mean, there's there's not many. Um, there's not Stop many pooping in the Amazon. An- an- anacondas <laughs> like sneaking around Manchester. You can start that rumor though. <laughs> Get it going. The anaconda oh, came up through my toilet. And you can be in the Daily Mail. It's fine. They'll take it. Are you just going back to you know you're saying like the panther and how like it escaped? Well, you know like the rumor mm. or whatever is that it escaped. Well, um, rumor. I was reading something the other day. It was about um. Pablo Escobar's cocaine hippos. The cocaine um, hippos. That was yeah. going to be my second fact. Oh. How the scientists <laughs> just want to eradicate them. Yeah, exactly. That was it. It's because yeah, they've, um, they all, oh, apparently what happened was Pablo Escobar had a private zoo. Because when mm-hmm. you're a billionaire cocaine dealer, like, why not? And mm-hmm. then when he got, um, got killed by the uh, FBI or whoever it was. You know, they came and seized all his property and they m- removed all the other animals and sent them off to real zoos. And then they looked at the hippos mm-hmm. and they're like two tons each and giant teeth and all that. And just thought, ah, yeah. oh, fuck it, we'll just leave them to starve to death. And it turns out yeah, that now, like, the now Amazon rainforest is the perfect environment for hippos. Apparently, yeah. the two things that. No like, natural just, predators. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The two things that stop hippo populations in Africa is annual droughts and like baby ones get eaten by crocodiles <laughs> so they introduce them to somewhere with no droughts and no crocodiles right, right. and it just 
I think I think it said there was, <laughs> there's like five original, five or six original hippos, and now there's like yeah, two thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's like, crazy, and they're they're really yeah. just like they're like cane toads in Australia. They're just taking <laughs> over the the local econ- uh, environment and ruining the ecology of the, the local area. Yeah, but apparently the problem they've got is that like the locals, even though they're like, I think they've only ever attacked one person. Uh, but in Africa, mm. they're like one of the deadliest creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like scientists are there, like you know, we're going to need to get rid of them. Like that's like fucking everything up. Um, but apparently, when they do occasionally shoot one or whatever, there's absolute massive outrage around massive all the local outrage. people because you know they love the fact that they've got Pablo Escobar's cocaine hippos like <laughs> in their neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> like it's their like celebrity hippos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like their thing. <laughs> That was good. I was expecting this sort of uh, on, on the local news to be like, it was such a lovely area before the cocaine hippos <laughs> moved in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. How shitty does your neighbourhood have to be if like, cocaine hippos <laughs> improve the <laughs> ambience? You know, local... Well, you know, the children have something agents. to do. <laughs> yeah. A very great proximity to the uh, cocaine hippos. Oh, yeah. Harold, they've got cocaine hippos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this this couple is that are moving. <laughs> <very much. laughs> moving to the far controlled areas yeah, right. like Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're the new local drug dealers. You, know, yeah. you just wouldn't suspect them. And they're like, oh, yeah. natural protection from all these hippos. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, but this guy Humphrey, it's, uh, to to reel it back oh, yeah. on oh, yeah. on topic, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's got a few uh, interesting quotes from his uh, from his release. He says, uh, "I've been in the woods all my life, and I have not ever seen any sign of Bigfoot." But yet he's still going ahead with this thing. And the official, what are they? The he's put up a twenty five thousand dollar bounty for anyone who can successfully trap and catch Bigfoot. Oh, so so wanted I think that, <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're, they're saying it's like a protected species because there's not many of them. So that no one's allowed to kill Bigfoot, oh. but they're allowed to trap. Yeah, it's a, there's there's some rules in there. There's some like <laughs> weird twists. I mean, I, no, no, I just can't go going crazy because he's doing this, right? But also the... Um, the spokesman for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation said in a television interview that the agency doesn't recognize Bigfoot and believes in a science-driven approach, but they've got to like monitor the area and they've got to give out the hunting licenses for something <laughs> they don't believe in. <laughs> There's so much our goal in that is, especially if you've like spent your whole life like studying zoology and biology and woodland protection and all that and then you've got to like, stamp people's bigfoot hunting licenses <laughs> what was all that for you get one you get a stamp that says <laughs> moron in latin or something like that so you assume that they won't be able to uh to pay too much attention to it does seem to be a sort of feature of of modern politics where there'll be center stage there'll be a politician coming up with wacky ideas or some mm-hmm. bluster and they'll sort of turn and seek, you know, the reassurance of a well-respected scientist. Yeah, who's, yeah. Who can't really say no. And it's like, well, yeah, I guess technically. And all the idea of like, we're going we're gonna to hunt Bigfoot. And then like the scientist in the corner going, well, I mean, that's, I guess technically, but, you know, it's, it's like when... Uh, yeah, like looking for is hunting, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's not a far cry from when Trump was talking about how he can, you know, mm. go covered with bleach, and he kept turning to the scientists like, "That's <laughs> right, isn't it?" And the scientists going, "Well, on some level, yes. In that, if you drink bleach, you will die, and then you won't <laughs> yeah, get the COVID. Co- COVID won't be in your body anymore. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but nothing now will anything else. So, <laughs> well, this guy, um, it's that's a, a a nice natural segue into uh, this guy, his history. And this feels like a bit of a him leaning into, even though he claims he doesn't believe Bigfoot, he's got a history of like leaning into a bit of conspiracy minded uh, ideas. He, because his local area, they have, um, they have a Bigfoot festival every year. So I guess this is the way of like encouraging that sort of thing. But he did actively encourage COVID-19 patients with hydroxychloroquine. Um, he's referred to pregnant women as hosts, which is a very respectable like a term. Chap. Yeah, right. 
he introduced a bill to make any designer or manufacturer of a vaccine to that to enforce them to notify retailers and healthcare providers if the vaccine contains human parts, animal parts, metals in any quantity, tracking devices, or any DNA altering properties. And I mean, he uh, has the weird thing about that is it assumes that there's this secret cabal of people who are putting in tracking devices and stuff into vaccines. But then, like, if they see a form that says you got to declare it, they're like, oh shit! Yeah, right. Well, like, <laughs> like, well it's, oh, it's like it'd, it'd be rude to not do the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like flying into a foreign country, and the question is like, yeah, you know, have you ever been convicted of any terrorism? And you'd be like, oh, I've been caught. I didn't think they were going to ask. <laughs> But I'm bound by the paperwork. Yeah, may I lie? No. Oh, that is that is quite a predicament for me then. Because <laughs> I'm true chaotic neutral. I'll act <laughs> in inappropriate ways, but when it comes to paperwork, I'll, I just feel like a, a strong bond with it. I respect the forms. I know that paperwork annoys people, so I respect <laughs> the forms. Uh, yeah, he's also like dropped anti-China conspiracy theories, saying that they manufactured COVID-19. Um, so you know, it's just real respectable chat in, uh, in in modern American politics. Then, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But there is um <laughs> one very outspoken and quite well known figure who says that there shouldn't be a hunting license for Bigfoot. Is it Bigfoot himself? And that's Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, it <laughs> sorry, is. Sorry. That was really a joke. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, this this writer D. L. Miller. He's got a series of children's, they're called Seek and Find activity books, which feature Bigfoot as the main character. And uh, it's kind of like Where's Wally, but with Bigfoot instead. Mm. And um, apparently <laughs> they're, they're full of, yeah, they're full of like facts about the area that Bigfoot's hiding in, which for me personally undermines the credibility of the facts in the book because you've got Bigfoot, <laughs> a creature who does not exist, <laughs> hiding in, <laughs> in an area you're trying to teach children about the real world and facts about the real world, but you do it through this mythical creature that doesn't exist. So I don't know. Which of these facts the whole are real? Which yeah. The whole thing. yeah, absolutely. But there was a press release from the, the publishing company from reportedly from Bigfoot himself saying, uh, I am admittedly opposed to the new bill. I strongly urge Mr. Humphrey to reconsider his position. And then the, the, the release says that he then retreated into the woods and there was no further questions. I can't believe Bigfoot's got an agent and we don't. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a fucking publicist. We're scrubbling around on Twitter for, for follows. Well, I mean, he's got a big following. You know, people are hunting yep. him, literally. Hunting him. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's a double-edged sword, Chris. Like, on the one hand, he's got an agent. Yeah. On the other hand, people are willing to spend thousands of dollars to kill him. You don't know my past. <laughs> oh, sorry, catch him. Oh, sorry. Catch him. <laughs> catch and hold. Yeah, it's sort of like a cryptozoology Pokemon at this point. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. All the different Him types of Moth, cryptozoologists, Moth, Moth, creatures. Moth, yeah. Uh, Bat Boy, Lo- um, the Sphinx. Nessie. <laughs> yeah, the Sphinx. Um, <laughs> the, at this point, I guess the, um, the elusive uh, panther, panther that's supposed to live here and there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, we've, we're, ours is fine. <laughs> we just need a cat. Oh, yours, yeah, yours, is, just some yours cat is caught in a box <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> Yeah. Whereas you've got the dignified sounding the Victorian Panther. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, it just sounds like he wears a top hat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I haven't finished reading this article, uh, but apparently there's a, some new evidence about Jack the Ripper, about him just being clumsy. Um, that's, uh, I mean, I'm clumsy. I've, I occasionally like spill my drinks on like, you know, on people's carpets. It feels like an oversell. Like that, right? I mean, I haven't like accidentally I haven't, murdered any prostitutes. <laughs> Unless Ripper Staples. is just like yeah. ripping clothes, like he just stumbles and tearing. Yeah, yeah. He ripped his pants again. Oh, Jack, what are you doing? <laughs> you got one oh, out. Jack. Um, but yeah, I, I have to read the rest of the article. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I like the idea of this guy being um, being like somewhat of a conspiracy theorist, and him getting like a X Files style television show government. The alien code. Yeah, for the, to believe. Needs, I was gonna say you need somebody on the other hand to just not believe everything, because otherwise, it just yeah, out of control. yeah. It's got like a Doctor Fauci who's uh, on his side. Yeah, yeah, just yelling bollocks every time he says something <laughs> untrue. <laughs> just real loudly. 
<laughs> Actually, just saying that, remember last year, like, when the US government basically admitted, well, didn't admit that there were aliens, but they admitted that they had UFO videos. Yes. Or at least yeah, they said UFO that there was. Said they were like, we can't explain any yeah. of these. Well, they, they call it unidentified aerial objects or aerial yeah. phenomena. Yeah, now, that was it. They've changed the. Uh, yeah. Which is weird because they're, it's like, just, yeah, it, they're just... all just synonyms for UFO. Like, because unidentified by an object. Uh, no, it's an unidentified aerial <laughs> phenomenon. It's like, <laughs> those are just. <laughs> Something that's got. Such means the same. Um, and point? Tom DeLong is the head of. Oh, yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, he's like, he had access, early access to files that turned out to be part of the big release. Because yeah. he's he's part of this big like UFO um, society. Yeah, it's dead weird because it's like oh, there was that Blink One Eight Two song called Aliens Exist, and it just seemed to be like all over like you know yeah songs like that they did like in the nineties, mm. the two thousands. It was even it was even before because Blink One Eight Two had that thing, didn't they? Where they were like idiots, and then they did like a serious album, and then they broke up and reformed and broke up and reformed and all that. This was like when they were still doing the like silly stuff. So it was just like, oh yeah, ha, ha, ha. Well, you know, it's just one of their death songs about aliens. And then, you know, years later, Tom DeLong is the face of the hunt for the UFOs. It's like, oh, wow, wow like, I suppose they telegraphed it, but I didn't really see it coming. And your point being that, like, we just all sort of forgot about that. Like, it didn't yeah. really go any further than that. The, the yeah. government goes, yeah, they're aliens. And then we went, yeah, okay, 2020. Yeah, well, that's it, got so overshadowed. The thing is, though, they never really said they were aliens. They just said, yeah, we can't explain this shit. In fact, if anything, it sort of suggests they're not aliens because if anything, the US government is not going to be like, yeah, well, there's aliens and um, good luck, you're on your own, chaps. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we can't even work out what a platypus is, let alone yeah. aliens. <laughs> okay, and on to the final topic, so handing over to myself. In honour of our guest co-host this week, I strove, or strived, stripping. <laughs> Irregular verbs are weird. Uh, to pick a topic on our Commonwealth cousins, the Australians. Um, I think you'll find it's. Uh, sh- uh, sh- oh, I was going to do a cacti joke. Uh, I don't know how to phrase it. <laughs> Strawford. Strawbe, yeah. Strawbe. So I came across a list of various reasons uh, given for people being sent to the continent as punishment back in the day. Ah, and, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you know, the highlights of <laughs> your be proud nation. Um, and thereby mm-hmm. came up with a game which I'm calling Australia Yeah or Australia Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. Um, I'll give you the circuit. I, I approve of that why name. We, why is it not? Uh, Go on. Uh, it's just like Australia Yeah or Australia Nay or something like that. Ah, uh, uh, nah. Nah, because sure there's a better yeah, pun nah. in there. Yeah, nah <laughs> is the. No, because okay, Yeah, nah is a, a phrase. It's an Australian phrase. Okay, yeah, nah cool. and nah, yeah. I'll give it you then. You've got you've got backing from the from a yeah we could so. uh, we workshop the name any any <laughs> any further offers on Australia or Australia now. <laughs> okay so here's how the game works I'll give you both the circumstances that led to someone's deportation some will be real and others invented and you two will guess whether in it's Australia yeah or in Australia <laughs> now nah. I'm not keeping score and there are no prizes so like ground beef the stakes have never been lower. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm good. <laughs> it's and yet, you gave up on comedy. Yeah, <laughs> before I even started. Okay, so number one, carnal knowledge of a sheep. Yeah. Uh, so no, I'm gonna say that feels that's like, like too much of a yeah. That feels like. I feel, that's like I was just gonna say, it feels like that's like sending, like, the, in, you know, like it's like giving somebody the victims, or you know, like it's like sending, like, like sending some, the bank robber to go to like the bank. Sheep aren't a, a naturally occurring creature. Um, what? I, 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 <laughs> created in a lab? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, like created in, in a Wuhan lab <laughs> to catch this guy out. Wuhan, more like. Oh, I ruined it. <laughs> um, so, okay, so uh, in <laughs> Australia, yeah, um, uh, this generally happened to Australia, lots, yeah. lots of people. Um, it's real. Lots? Um, well, yeah, a significant lots. amount, as in more than but one. Is this like a, but is this like accusing someone of being a witch? You know what I mean? In, in that it's like, 
Yeah, he definitely did that. Get rid of him. Well, it, here's the, the, the fun, if disturbing fact, that the penalty for stealing a sheet <laughs> okay, okay. was much more severe than being caught fucking one. So people often used to claim to be <laughs> shagging sheep when actually they were trying to nick them. Right, right. Um, the joys of life before the road. Well, yeah, I guess because uh, I guess at that point, yeah. So it comes down to like weighing your consequences, and it comes down to it's, like it's if a... you're already in a, such a tough position that you have to steal sheep, then you've got no clout publicly to ruin by saying, yeah. I wasn't it's, stealing it, it, I was it, just shagging it. It's also a really interesting split decision. When you're caught, you've got to drop your trousers <laughs> and just go with it. Or maybe claim that you were yeah, it's, in yeah, the yeah, play stage. Finished. <laughs> well, just pretend <laughs> yeah, you're cuddling yeah. and having a cigarette I'm a, afterwards. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a courteous lover. And uh, <laughs> I like to look after, make sure all of my sheep are happy. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't worry, officer. She finished first. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, number two, shoplifting limes. Shoplifting limes. Yep. Shoplifting oh. limes. No, nah, I'm gonna say no. I I'm like gonna say it. yeah, because people got sent for for real minor crimes. It was just like a. a I was culling. thinking, did we have a, any a limes to shoplift? Out. Every everybody must go. <laughs> now, that's a fair point. Uh, point to fair Chris, argument. If uh, points I'm gonna were, stand were, by were mine. a thing, uh, it's false. Uh, fun fact: the lime was invented in 1956, long after the. Uh, Station of people to Australia. Uh, there you go. <laughs> number three, grabbing booty. <laughs> Are we talking in the pirate sense or in the like the butt sense? I'll leave that up to the uh, the contestants to decide. Uh, Australia, that... nay, nah. Has... <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Temple really means no. <laughs> if you well, well means no. if you're gonna say no, nah, then I'm, for the sake of um, competition, I'm gonna say yeah. Oh, well, in that case, uh, a point to Matt, if points were a thing. Oh. Uh, it's true, uh, and by booty, there were, yes. in fact, uh, silk baby shoes. Um, a maid was accused of <laughs> stolen them from a, a house she uh, was uh, in charge of, and uh, years later, after her deportation, they were discovered down the back of a dresser. Oh, wow. Wow. You oh, got deported right. to the continent full of giant murder lizards and inexplicable platypus. <laughs> Or because some rich person couldn't be asked <laughs> looking down the back of their own sofa. I mean, it is heavy, so, you know, who could blame them? It's much easier to <laughs> force the maid so someone <laughs> than uh, move some furniture. <laughs> the maid normally does it, but they'd already deported her. <laughs> yeah, that's, they set her up. There's no one to move it. Yeah, so, when so, they hired someone new, they were like, oh. <laughs> I also like that, well, not like, but it is interesting that, you know, they don't get a warning. It's like, have you seen my baby shoes? Uh, no, my lord. Oh, right, okay. Well, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you haven't? Well, we'll see if you haven't seen them in Australia. <laughs> Boom. Number four, in a similar vein, grabbing jugs. <laughs> so silly. Oh, God. Okay, good, yeah. Oh, well, I get, well, the opposite of you, Matt, then, just in the spirit of competition. I have to go Australia now. <laughs> well, someone's picking up points. It's an Australia, yeah. And by, <laughs> well, by grabbing jugs, uh, someone stole a, a jug from a pub in Cork, and the fitting punishment was to send them to a penal colony on the other side of the world. Because <laughs> it's like, seems this reasonable. Is, <laughs> it's like, this hey, is like, so... your last pint, if you have it outside, you just take the pint glass home and maybe bring it back, but maybe not. <laughs> And, and well, they have loosened those laws a little since then, you know. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, it's just so sort of like arbitrary. Like they just, it just sounds like just like, oh, what shall the penalty for this thing be? Kind of shit for like eight weeks and other side of the world and never see your family again. Yeah, that seems fair. Well, uh, the sort of dark undertone to all of this is there's a lot of. I'd say it's a dark overtone. To be fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the overtone that yeah, the, the comedic it's not super nature, subtle. <laughs> the, the comedic nature of the, the topic is maybe uh, not addressing it, is the fact that a lot of these cases are minor crimes committed by Irish people and the punishment is set mm. down by the British. Mm. So uh, it's yeah. all with the caveat Racism. Of, of, yeah, British uh, uh, imperialism. 
<laughs> luckily, yeah. <laughs> luckily things have changed massively recently, <laughs> and everything's smooth sailing <laughs> from here on out. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, number five, goosing. Oh, I'm gonna say I study. Yeah, I don't know what goosing is, but I bet it's one of those old timey things. For something like yeah, uh, look, know, fighting it is one that I believe. Yeah, it's one that I believe is one. But again, I'm gonna take the uh, the spirit of competition and say nah, yeah. nah. <laughs> you, you are allowed to uh, agree. Uh, given I know. The, the, oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, okay, uh, j- just so you're both absolutely clear, there is no prize. This but you know, you guys game. sent us here. You guys sent us here. Oh, you oh. sent us away. I'm gonna be in opposition. <laughs> F- fair enough. That is your absolute right to uh, to do so. Uh, so goosing is uh, to grab. It's my to... cultural right. <laughs> goosing is to, to pinch someone on the bum, but this is not what this crime is. This is the, uh. theft, the theft of a goose. Um, uh. and, and this is one of the, the few occasions where it's so, it's actually fitting because having been discovered stealing a goose, he then beat the shit out of the owner of the goose. So. Sort of like I thought you were going to say he said that he was fucking the goose. <laughs> no, <it> just, <laughs> he claimed that because he thought he would get away with it. He thought he'd get off, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number six, failing to retweet a link to someone's GoFundMe page. <laughs> uh, that is a criminal offence. Uh, we actually send people to New Zealand for that. <laughs> I was gonna say nowadays, like you know, if you did that, and it's like you get a free holiday to um, Australia, everyone be like, "Oh, I'm not gonna retweet any links ever." <laughs> get well, me over uh, there. Facebook, Facebook just did a mass ban of Australian news sites. Oh, that's true. In, uh, from sharing, so yeah. we can't. I, I was can't watching that story. Any, like, any links at the moment? Yeah, I was watching the story like in the news web, and it was like. Murdoch versus Zuckerberg. It's like can both mm, sides basically. lose somehow? <laughs> like Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Whoever wins, we lose. I also, like on the on the news that the I think it was the BBC interviewing just average Australians on the street and someone had never like d- hadn't heard the news. They're like, Oh, really? That's a bit of a bugger. Really? Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna carry on with my life now. <laughs> like, thank you for that. They hadn't heard the news because no one could share it on Facebook. <laughs> well, yeah, That's true, I suppose, the yeah. news. <laughs> It just kind of like undermines the purpose of uh, Facebook's whole campaign. Like it only affects people who would pay attention to the news anyway. So life will just carry on for <laughs> some people, I guess. For most, yeah, yeah, big chunks of people, yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so just for the in the sanctity of the quiz, that was false. They were actually, <laughs> actually hanged for uh, for not doing that. Um, <laughs> Uh, number seven, and rightly so. An indifferent opinion on who they want to win the Great British Bake Off this season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's impossible to have a not have an opinion on the Great British Bake Off. No, it's false. Everyone wants Simon to win. Number eight, a uh, stealing a pie cooling on a kitchen windowsill. Oh no, that's far too uh, idyllic. <laughs> like in Britain, if you leave a pie steer it, it's a cool on the windowsill, like it's getting stolen. Treason. <laughs> it's, not even, I it's not even a debate. <laughs> Well, you're right. It's a it's a cartoonish sort of uh, like you say idyllic crime. So yes, naturally it's true. Someone was sent on the side <laughs> of the world for stealing a warm pie. Presumably they wafted there like the, on the nose, like you know, yeah. been caught in the nose by the smells, like a visual representation of the smell. Yeah. Meanwhile, a uh, a cartoon dog stole a string of sausages <laughs> from a butcher. I was gonna say they set the pie up on the boat. And whoever tried to steal it, they just pushed them. <laughs> yeah, there were pie crumbs leading to the boat, and then it was just inside a cage. As soon as they take the pie, the <laughs> cage slaps behind them. Yeah. It's like that mouse trap board game from back in the day. <laughs> Irish trap. Number nine, the crime of being a 13 year old girl. Oh, that definitely sounds like something the British would well, do in the Victorian times. Are you married yet? Yeah, absolutely. No. Okay, <laughs> into the gulag. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunately true. At one point, the ratio of men to women in mining towns in Australia was uh, too high. So in Britain and Ireland, they visited workhouses and orphanages and took any girl aged 13 or older and shipped them all to Australia. Jeez. It's, uh, <laughs> I know it's a comedy podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're making this hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, a gritty reboot of Annie that's just waiting to be made, I guess. Like, <laughs> 
It is a hard knock life. <laughs> Uh, number ten, uh, slaying a cow. There's a very, there's a strong livestock theme going on here. Well, there wasn't that much, there wasn't Xboxes back then, so <laughs> what, what, what there is, wasn't that much going on. <laughs> what is the Xbox of its day if not a cow? <laughs> I, I'm going to say no on this one. I'm going to think maybe it was a harsher, like probably just someone straight up got hung for it or hanged, and um, like you know, like instead of shipping them off, like mm. at one point you're going to have to slip one you of have those to in kill there. somebody. Yeah, uh, it's in Australia. Yeah, the the crucial information is that um, they hunted a cow in India while it was still under British rule. Obviously, cows being sacred there, and the, uh, it was given the, <laughs> the royal of cow punishment yeah. by the native Indians, which would have probably been death or going to Australia, also probable death, but slightly better odds maybe. Right, that's like the old Eddie Izzard bit: death or cake. <laughs> But, but this is just death or death. <laughs> yeah, death or later death. Number eleven, vol troubling. Vol troubling. Actually, that I'm gonna say yeah, like... that sounds like something like you'd do if you were like messing with some like... farmer's field or something. Uh, but again, for the sake of competition and for being uh, true to my people, <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Contrarian. <laughs> well, thank you for being so supporting. You were rewarded <laughs> with a fake point. Uh, it's an Australian now. Nah. Uh, vols actually yes. have to be messed with. Um, all the girl <laughs> vols love a bad vol. Um, and finally, uh, number 12, Judge Slander. Is that his name? <laughs> Judge Dredge. Judge John D. Yeah, he Judge presided Slander. over... <laughs> okay, slandering a judge then, if we prefer. He presided over my court case, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I want to know what the slander is, though. Yeah, how? Like it has to be... You know, like, it's either something really... It's not, a, it's not his real Harsh hair. or totally inane. Um... Well, you, you you both get a, a final point. It's in Australia. It's yeah. true. Uh, the guy the guy called the judge a mangy cunt, and to be honest, Australia, which even then had a very relaxed view of the c word, was probably the best place for him. Wow! <laughs> really? He did that? Yeah. That sort of implies then. If that's why he was sent to Australia, that almost implies that whatever court case he was on, he won, called the judge a mangy <laughs> gun, and then got deported. <laughs> yeah, like he was strolling out. A and free started man. a long-standing tradition. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you for playing Australia or Australia now. There are no prizes. There was barely even a game, let's be honest. Well, hopefully, there was a couple of facts. <laughs> bleak as they were, smuggled in there. Oh, no, don't talk to us talking about smuggling. I mean, oh, yeah, that's true. the one thing that would A, get you deported, and then B, get you. Um, <laughs> and the Australians take that very seriously. There's a whole cottage industry yeah, yeah. in Britain of watching um, Australian border patrol shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike Sotheby from uh, Winchester tried to smuggle yeah, we, in a we, raisin um... and was shot on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and then sent to Nauru. No, is that the island that Australia? That's our big thing. Yeah, that's our big island prison. Which is, you know, for us, it's audacious to take <laughs> someone to an offshore island and lock them up uh, for an indefinite period of time. But, you know, I think like, if we've learned nothing else, that it turns into a thriving colony. So I think they're you've, hoping. You've got a taste of it. You can see why we did it in the back of the day. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it does feel good to send people off to an island. Yeah, and in a few hundred years, I'll beat you at rugby and cricket and any other sport to invent it. <laughs> yeah, they'll take over as the, uh, the leading AFL team. <laughs> I've noticed there's a pattern with um, like British sports is we Have basically you- go like, we invent a sport, ship it around the world, other countries beat us at it, and then we go, no, it's not even a real sport. Nobody watches it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a proud British tradition. Yeah, you know, it's the whole reason for Empire is to uh, introduce your sports to everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like conquer the world can't even get, um, spices and then never use them. We ourselves. can't even get. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as like the AFL goes, it's mostly a Victorian game. We can't even get to spread that widely in Australia. So the only way we're going to get other people to play it is to uh, colonize them, force them to play it. <laughs> That's essential, British. Basically, France wouldn't play rugby or, something, or cricket. And so England was like, well, we'll find somebody else to play. <laughs> we'll take our ball, ball and sticks and go home. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Cooking with Grief. 
we hope you find this latest batch of weird and wonderful facts an entertaining and educational listen. Uh, although, I somewhat doubt it. If you want more of our blend of fact and farce, you can follow us on Twitter at Cooking with Jeep with no grief. Uh, no, no grief. <laughs> no Just grief. Cooking with. Just cooking with. Sorry. You can follow us on Twitter at Cooking with Grief with no G on cooking. And it really helps us out if you left us a glowing review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And tell a friend if you think they'd like it. The word of mouth really is the best way to help support the show. So thank you to me for being great. Thank you to Chris for being equally great. Oh, that was very kind of you. I thought you were going to say being average and amplifying your greatness, but you know. No, I. When when you are great, I am great. That's mm-hmm. the part of the the team. Um, you don't have to put anybody else down to raise other boats up. Exactly. Um, so that well, was so nice, wasn't it? Put you off your stride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you weren't expecting any sincerity. <laughs> in, in like 15 years of friendship, I don't think we've ever said anything nice to each other. It really made me sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, a, a much a much bigger thanks, a much more sincere thanks to uh, Matt for coming on. <laughs> We don't have to put anybody else down to raise boats. So anyway, a much bigger and more genuine thanks. <laughs> well, right over, the difference is, I thank you. Like we thank each other every week, so it loses okay. some of its shine. Matt is a genuine special guest. Okay. Um, yeah. So okay. Uh, thank you, give it to coming on and indulging us. Where can people follow you? See more of your stuff, and have you got anything mm. uh, to plug? Uh, so I, I mean. Not that anyone can uh, travel anywhere at the moment, but um, much down the road, there's a Melbourne International Comedy Festival show, a live version of my Weird News Quiz, which uh, Chris appeared on, and um, a live version of my storytelling show, I Got Bit by a Monkey Once. But in the interim, if people want to check out, uh, if you want to find me on Twitter, I'm at Matt Harvey Stuff, and I've got a podcast which shares, so this to the weird news quiz and the bearer of weird news both go into the same podcast feed and um so you can find episodes of either of those in there uh the bearer of weird news is a news satire show which uh i look at it does focus a lot on australian news but it's it does break out like recently i looked at how um bolsonaro might be up for crimes against humanity charges for his damage to the amazon and how he won the Corrupt Person of the Year Award. And um, uh, I've looked at, you know, I'll be looking at the, the Facebook stuff in the episode that's just about to come out, the, the Facebook banning all of Australian news. And so the, there's a mix of stuff in there. The Weird News Quiz, I get guests uh, who are generous enough to come out and, and be silly with me regarding news. Uh, but otherwise, I'll be doing gigs around. Uh, sort of when when gigs can really properly happen and i'll hopefully be at edinburgh one day if ever, edinburgh ever happens again well if it ever does i think we should uh, hang out on in, in this hemisphere i think we should all meet up for uh well it won't be a socially distanced drink we'll be able to vomit on each other <laughs> yeah if i'm, <laughs> if I'm able want. to enter the uk <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm looking but yeah to uh, i'll definitely that's <laughs> the, the next major yeah <laughs> The next major goal is to to do an Edinburgh run, and uh, that was supposed to happen in twenty twenty. Fucking twenty twenty! It's such a non year. I think we should just strike out. We should just go back to twenty nineteen and just pretend it like, and we should all get to knock like two years off our ages and everything, and just go back to <laughs> how things were. Our children will be so confused, <laughs> particularly for the ones who go back into the negative. Like the. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't even turned zero yet. <laughs> also, we dig up all the dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't the most practical time. Oh, and just a uh, weekend at Bernie's them. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you see the news. There's like a hundred thousand of them we need to do. <laughs> it's... Oh, that, that was dark. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's like a it's like thriller, but like <laughs> but much much worse. Yeah. We'll try and do it as light hearted as we can. It's more oh. of a filler. Been a <laughs> <laughs> that note <laughs> on that incredibly morbid and uh, yeah um, on that yeah. note <laughs> yep yeah. 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 on on yeah, that, that note that's the taste you want to leave in the listeners mouths 
Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Listener, we are leaving you with decay of a thousand, a hundred thousand dead. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. I'm Swanson, host of the TV Tuners podcast. Every week on TV Tuners, me and my co-host Kyo Rain, Swanson, I need water, and Stairmaster. Review the latest in TV, and discuss news, trailers, and even find time to play some fun games. Right now, we're working overtime to cram as much TV knowledge into our brains as possible. Isn't that right, guys? Swanson, we've been here for 24 hours. We need to get out of here. Not until you answer who Norm is. He's Fraser's brother. Wrong. You get the shock. <laughs> Check out TV Tunes, available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, or any of the podcatchers of your choice.